Hey, Anthony, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, man? Good, good. I hear you're in Europe, huh? Exactly. Yeah. Getting some, uh, some sun compared to the Canada that we have. There you go. So today I want to talk about a hot topic, which is the whole idea of graph rag versus vector store rag. In fact, uh, Microsoft recently came out with a blog that has gotten a lot of attention around the advantages of graph rag. And so that is something that I really want to talk about and in fact show today. Yeah, exactly. So we're trying to, at ArangoDB, compare the differences between vector store rag and graph rag. And we've got a nice demo to showcase and to tell you that ArangoDB graph rag is cheaper and faster than traditional rag. And also, I think, as we'll see, a more complete and richer response. Is that right? Yep. We've got some examples to show exactly that. Great. So quicker to set up and get your results going, less expensive potentially, and richer and more context relevant responses. Okay, let's let's take a look. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we've got this notebook here that talks about RAG versus a RongoDB graph RAG. We gotta go in, go into some brief, brief, brief little explanation. So you've got your naive LLMs nowadays, which is your chat GPT 3.5s, your fours, your Anthropics, your Google Clothes. And these, these LLMs of course can be augmented through retrieval augmented generation where we rely on external data sets or external data source to improve the LLM performance. Now, we'd like to go a step ahead and combine the ArangoDB graph capabilities that we have with retrieval on aug augmented generation. So we're gonna be using this notebook today to describe exactly the comparison between these two. For that though, we're going to be using an, a, a data set originating from the GDELT open intelligence source. Uh, this particular event has to do with international news spanning across different countries. And so the data model looks very simple. In yellow, we've got events. Uh, and these events have an actor or multiple actors, and they're located somewhere. And they have a particular news organization that has reported this event, which is called source. If we take a look at an event just as an example, we can see here that it comes with a description, a date stamp, as well as a fat fatalities and geo coordinates. Cool. So. Let's imagine this on a larger scale and you can picture multiple events having multiple actors, different locations. Okay, now for the RAG portion of the demo, we're gonna be using something called Llama Index. Llama Index is a Python library to utilize vector stores. We have an ArangoDB, a simple ArangoDB integration that allows us to read ArangoDB documents into a vector store here. And we're going to be using an in-memory vector store to compare it against ArangoDB graph RAG. So, the first step of this RAG setup is to load all of our, our event data. So we're specifically interested in this demo about the, the nodes in yellow uh, into this vector store. And so this process for some, for some data sets can take uh, as long as multiple days. And the reason is because we're taking the uh, natural data representation of our, collect, of our RongoDB data and we're turning it into vectors or embeddings. So every time your data changes, you got to redo that or what? Yeah, so in a sense, your embeddings are the vector representation of your data. So if your data changes, you've modified it an attribute or you've added new fields, in theory, you have to recompute those embeddings. And the more modifications you make, the more you have to recompute those embeddings. Well, what if I just get new documents, new events, like you're talking about new violent events? Exact same thing. So a modification to an existing document or a new event is introduced, you have to recompute or you have to compute the, those embeddings. Cool. So. For this particular case, we're going to be combining the simple graph store from Llama Index with GPT-3.5, and we're going to be checking that out in a, in a moment. The other step we do now is once we have the embedding representation of our data, we're just gonna load it from uh, the directory that we persisted the embeddings in. And so in this particular case, we're gonna use GPT-4. So when we see graph store here, that's not a graph database, that's just what you're calling the vector store, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So in Llama Index, it, there's a concept of a, a of a simple graph store, and so this allows us to store triplets uh, using an in-memory Python dictionary. But it essentially is a way to represent our data through embeddings with the vector store. Great, thank you. All right, so we've got a simple helper method to basically uh, compute the query or the cost associated to a response. We're going to check that out in a moment. But let's take a look at our first example of RAG. So a typical query would look like something something like this, where I would like to see an event happening in a random location. 
And what's going to happen is we're going to compute the embedding representation of this query and compare it against the embedding representation of our data. We get a nice response here written in bold. Now, one thing that we didn't mention is that in particular, the, to the cost to do this query was around 0 0.03 cents. Now, the total cost up until this point was $50. And the reason why this took $50 is because we had to compute the embedding representation of all of our data prior to, to, uh, to running this query. And so that took either multiple hours, multiple days, whatever, but it also came with a $50 flat cost. Some more questions, very simple. Have there been any events that mention diamonds in the description? And by description, I am referring to the description field that we saw earlier over here. We can see that the vector store was not able to come with us at an answer. And this one took 004 cents to query. So Anthony, this isn't good. We know in GraphRag we'll get the answer, but why, what is it about the vector store that doesn't allow you to even answer this? Yeah, so there are definitely events uh, in the data set that have diamonds in the description and the embeddings were, I hope, we hope to have those embeddings represent diamonds. But it seems like this total, the way this query was written, it seems that diamonds was not picked up by the similarity algorithm that we use to compare the embedding of this query with the embeddings in our data. What we'll see in our graph rag solution for RongoDB is that Diamonds is indeed an important entity from this query, and the LLM is able to reason that, reason that and uh, generate an AQL query to fetch our answer. So it's, a, it's about entity importance here. Um, how important was the word diamonds relevant to the word events or mention? Vector stores, it is hard to determine. And so we really won't know which questions will not get answered until they're asked. <laughs> kind Pretty of. much. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair assumption to make. So if we deployed this to users, and we said, go at it. The whole point of a, of a chatbot or natural language is that you ask a question, you get an answer. Yeah. In this case, we see that it came up uh, shorthanded. All right. One last one. Um, this particular query is asking about the event type. So if you recall, every event is linked to an event type, which is in red. We're asking for events of violence against civilians. It does give us an answer. It's written in bold here. But I mean, we can see that it's not as verbose. It did only cost 0 0.04 cents, which is good, but we're now sitting around $50.20 for the uh, total cost. Last query, just really quickly, a more complicated one where we're interested in fetching the, total, the, the most popular actor, specifically relative to the amount of events they're associated to using the fatalities count. Un unfortunately, it was also unable to answer. Okay, now at ArangoDB, we consider GraphRag as a tool that we have through LangChain. And so by extension, embeddings is not in the question. And so there's no need to maintain a vector index because we strongly believe using a RongoDB on its own is enough to achieve this natural language to natural language response that you're looking for, for your external data sources. So in this particular case, we've got a LangChain graph that we're going to instantiate. We're going to specify a chat GPT model from that LangChain import and then we're basically going to uh, use GPT-4 to instantiate a chain object to ask questions. So just to be clear here, with the vector store, we have this big step of doing the embeddings, which can take many hours, many days. That's not at all included in this graph rack piece. We're, we already have the data. It's got the context in it. There's no need for that. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. So in ArangoDB's graph rack implementation, you're doing rag directly from the source data in OrangoDB. There's no embeddings, no vector store whatsoever. Got it. Cool. All right, so if we get to the querying part after we've instantiated our chain object, we can go back to the same exact queries that we saw previously. Tell me events happening in a random location generates a nice, a nice AQL query along with a quick traversal utilizing that graph piece in order to fetch us an event that took place in Dauda. The question you would start to think of is, wait a second, 20 cents, that's more expensive than the 004 cents I saw earlier. The answer is yes, you're right. Previously, we saw vector store queries take around 004, 03, all that stuff. Now, the question that we'd like to ask is, can a vector store query scale with your data? Because let's imagine for a sec, you don't have 60,000 documents. Let's imagine you have 3 million documents. 
computing the embeddings of a query will still remain the same in terms of cost, but comparing that embedding to the 3 million embeddings that you've got is going to be a much larger cost than the 60,000. So we believe that this token cost for the query will be much larger as your data scales. So what I'm seeing here is that you can't predict the query cost in a vector store situation, but with our RAG situation, graph RAG, you can, it, it stays pretty constant, correct? We'd like to, we'd like to say that, yes, the, the query cost for AQL should remain consistent because you're generating AQL query and you're fetching JSON results. Now, you have the ability to limit the JSON results you return, therefore bounding the amount of JSON tokens that are used for this query. Whereas, I mean, for vector stores, you don't, you have to scan across the 3 million documents, whereas this is just a simple AQL query. All right, let's take a look at one that we saw earlier that didn't give us any response. Events that mention diamonds in the description gives us a very verbose response with the event identifiers, the dates, along with the fact that why diamonds were mentioned in the description. Wow. So we've, we see we have five over here, and we see that this particular query took around 22 cents to compute. So I'm seeing a consistent pattern here. The cost is yep. predictable, and mm -hmm. that's the beauty of this. The result, though, it's so rich. I mean, look at all that detail. This is one that the vector couldn't answer at all. Is that right? Absolutely. Then that's highlighted over here in bold. Yep. Right. So no answer provided for the uh, diamonds query. Here's another one. Um, has there been violence against civilians? We get a much more verbose answer. We have the date, we have the description of the event, and we have a total of 10 results that uh, are marked as violence against civilians. And so again, similar cost as the ones that we've seen before. The only reason you're not seeing the query this time is because we've got the verbose flag set to false, but under the hood, what's happening is we're using AQL to generate and execute a, a query, and then we're returning that result as JSON and parsing that back to natural language. So let's compare just this answer all over here, just to the you know original answer that we got from Vector Store. Wow. So, you know, I can I can go on. There's a, a lot more things. The the beauty of AQL is that it's multi-model, right? So with this OrangoDB graph rag piece that you see, AQL is really at the heart of this, therefore implying that you can take advantage of this product for document databases, key value, graph, and search database. What about geospatial as well? Geospatial as well. So basically anything that OrangoDB supports in terms of model capabilities or database capabilities that is offered through AQL, you can take advantage of now through natural language. You know, I often wondered if you tried this whole RAG thing and the LLM do the lang chain, if you even tried this with a graph only database, and then you had to somehow go do a document database on the side or a search database on the side, how could you even do that in real time? You'd have to integrate each query result on the fly. I, I can't even imagine how you would do that. Yeah, it would truly become a quite a headache to manage. And so we advocate that your data should stay in one source storage as, as, as much as you can, because when you start to branch out in different data stores or different source storage engines, it just gets way more complicated. Okay, now, finally, let's just wrap up really quickly. So we established that the in-memory RAG approach that we were using with Vector, with Llama Index, I'm sorry, took around $50 for those four queries that we did because of the upfront cost to compute the embeddings. Whereas we were sitting at around two, $3 for the OrangoDB graph rag directly through the database via AQL. And so you can start thinking about what it means to rely on graph rag for OrangoDB versus vector store rag, talk about the cost, talk about the upfront time that you spend for computing those embeddings. But again, at OrangoDB, we advocate that graph rag is superior and uh, we'd like to use this demo to uh, show that. No, it's a great demo. And by the way, we have a wonderful uh, tech brief available on our website on this comparison and some detailed uh, costing figures as well that are very in favor of graph rag, probably not 50 to one as we're seeing here, but definitely we'll get into that. So I encourage you to download that. But this is great, Anthony. Really appreciate the real world, right? This is real world data, real world queries. This is not smoke and mirrors. I'm, I'm guilty of marketing fluff once in a while. This is not that, right? This is the real deal.
All right. Well, thanks for your time, Anthony. Appreciate it. Likewise. Take it easy. See you.